Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. We are starting with a physique update of Behrouz Tabani, two days out of Dubai Pro, where he possibly could end up winning. Now, we're gonna have the other two guys, William Bonek and Nathan Diasha, and William Bonek beat Behrouz Tabani, and Nathan Diasha later beat uh, William Bonek. But before that, Bekrus Tabani beat Nathan the Ashes. So anything is possible between these three guys. But since all three of them are qualified for the Mr. Olympia, there will be no excuses. There won't be any politics comments now. If one of these three win or whoever places higher, it's gonna be based on the way they look. And that's it, hopefully. But then there is also Nexilla, who is a huge wild card who could end up winning or placing fourth. We don't know yet. It depends on what kind of conditioning he brings to this show. But we don't have a physique update from him. Not today, not at two days out. Hopefully tomorrow at one day out. Hopefully he's gonna post something. But as of right now, we got a physique update from Behrouz Tabani. And what do we see here? What kind of look is he bringing to this show? Well, for two days out... I mean, you can't expect the guy to be at his driest or at his fullest. Right now, he is in his peaking process, so during the next two days, he's gonna dry out more, and he's gonna probably fill out more. At this point, he did dry out somewhat, I'm sure, and he filled out a little bit, but this is, of course, not the final package we're gonna see on stage, but I feel like these guys were working on bringing the fullness up in the meantime between these two shows, and knowing Milos as well, who was always known for making the most progress between the shows, you know, utilizing that uh, post-show rebound period, when you're just soaking everything in like a sponge, so I'm pretty sure what they did here was, you know, they, they upped the food a little bit, as much as possible, to the point where he doesn't get any fatter, and they probably used a lot of gear as well at the same time, heavy training, hard training, and that's actually, it, it's crazy how much uh, bigger and fuller you can get in a couple of weeks if you really utilize the post-show rebound, you can, you can definitely change your look. You might say that it's difficult to pick a guy three times, uh, three shows in a season, but in this case, knowing Milos's protocols, I think Behrouz is gonna be at his absolute best at this show, his biggest and leanest at the same time, and I have a feeling that this guy is gonna place either first or second uh, to Nexilla. Here is a little video as well, at uh, two days out, he's still doing some training, but it looks like he's doing some pump-up work, which is also what I like to do two days out of a show, just some pump work, upper body pump, then the day before the show, no training, and of course on the day of the show you compete. So that's what they're doing here, just moving the blood a little, making sure the glycogen goes to where it needs to go. And it's very important when you're doing this kind of stuff two days out, not to get carried away, because the pump is gonna be unreal, it's gonna, it's gonna force you to start training harder, but it's very important not to do it. You don't wanna create any inflammation and not to, to spend too much glycogen, so what they're doing is just pumping up a little bit. Tomorrow probably he'll just, you know, rest, eat and pose, and uh, on the day of the stage, I think this is gonna be Behrouz's best. Now, can he win? I do think he's going to beat both Nathan Diash and, and, and William Bonag at this show. Again, it can be any of these guys, but I feel like it's gonna be Behrouz, who ends up placing the highest out of these three guys. And as far as Nexilla, he can be the first, or fourth, or second, or third, but I think he's gonna be definitely in that top four. He already beat uh, Nathan Diasha last year, when he was definitely a lot worse. He improved a lot in the meantime, but we don't know what kind of conditioning uh, he's gonna bring. So if Nexilla is really conditioned, I have him winning, even against Behrouz Tabani, but... We still have to wait and see that, I mean, it's really hard to predict this kind of stuff. Out of these three guys, I do have Behrouz Tabani as the top runner. We also got a little physique update from Nathan Diasha as well, and, you know, it's not something we haven't seen before. Nothing new here, really. His back double bicep, you know, it looks crispy, he looks dry, it looks like he's uh, uh, filling up a little bit slowly. I mean, there is still two more days to carb up fully. So I think he's gonna be also very, very good, and I think William Bonac is gonna bring his best. But out of these three guys right now, I think Behrouz is the favorite. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get some uh, new physique updates, last moment updates from, for example, Nexilla or the other guys as well. If I get any of those, I'm gonna make a video about it. So guys, stay tuned, subscribe. But now let's talk about something else. We got a physique update from Sadiq Hadjovic, who recently competed at Chicago Pro, and he did the man's physique. 
And in this new video, he's doing bodybuilding poses, classic bodybuilding, classic physique poses. But at Chicago Pro this past weekend, he did not look good. He did not place well. Uh, he spilled over badly. He spoke about this on his YouTube channel. It was a peak week mistake. Basically, uh, he, he, he made a weight, but then he started introducing carbs back up and probably some water way too quickly. And he was smooth. He looked very smooth, especially his midsection. There were no details in the abs, but this is just one peak week that went wrong. I think next show he does, and I think it's going to be Tampa. I'm not sure if he's going to do actually man's physique or classic physique, but if he does man's physique, I think he can improve significantly and actually win that show, but I would still love to see him in classic physique. Uh, one of the reasons why he spilled over in man's physique was because he was struggling to make the weight, and then when he tried to carve back up, he, he failed, it backfired, it happens. So hopefully he knows exactly where he made a mistake, I mean him and his coach, and they can fix it for the next show, but if he he did classic physique that's not something he would have to worry about and honestly his physique in classic poses it actually looks very good now he's not perfect of course the back definitely needs more work and he could be bigger but honestly not that much bigger i mean sure the other guys are heavier he's 10 pounds below his classic physique weight cap at least he was when he competed in man's physique but if he didn't care about the weight that much he would probably be like five pounds over or like five pounds shy of his classic physique weight cap now as you can see in the classic poses he actually looks very good i would never say that he is too small for for classic physique he is actually very complete, he has very aesthetic physique, small waist, and that's exactly what they're looking for in, in classic. Like, there are some guys who are former bodybuilders who make the weight and they look huge, but they don't have the classic lines. There are some other guys who just don't have the classic shape, and Sadiq absolutely does have it. For some reason, he doesn't believe he can do that well in, in classic physique, and maybe like he can't, you know, win the Mr. Olympia, but I can see him battling it out for first spot at some of these pro shows. But I don't think his mind is set to do a classic physique show. I don't know why he's doing all these classic poses, because he loves it, probably. He loves it more than man's physique, but he's aware that he's probably more competitive in man's physique. And it's very unfortunate. As a fan of bodybuilding, I want to see him do bodybuilding. And once again, in this physique update, in his bodybuilding poses, he actually looks phenomenal. Very aesthetic, very classic. Once again, he should switch to classic, and that's it. Alright, the next thing is very interesting. It caused a lot of traction on social media. James Hollins here basically posted his uh, cycle. So, at uh, 295 plus pounds, this is what he's taking. So, he's doing zero insulin, zero SEOs, and he's using five IUs of uh, GH. Now, at this point, this all is believable. So, no insulin, okay, that's fine. Uh, no SEOs, that's interesting because he says nothing against use of this. So he probably knows a lot of guys who are doing it, especially on the Mr. Olympia stage, but he is not doing it. I believe him, in which body part would you imagine he was doing it? Like, he has no uh, standout body parts, not really. He's a big guy, but nothing is really standing out, so I don't think he needed to, to point to this. Five IUs of GH, also very believable, like usually a sweet spot is four to six if it's real stuff, and most guys, as they're getting closer to the show, they, they, they increase it, but then they pull it out, usually at the very end before the show. Now, as far as the actual gear part, we're gonna get back to that. He also says that he's using some T3 and T4, and so I guess he is prepping right now, but I'm not sure. I mean, if he's not prepping and he's using this much uh, T3 and T4, there's probably something wrong with him. He has to take replacement. I mean, T4 is fine because that's an inactive uh, thyroid hormone and he's on 5 IUs of GH, so the conversion of T4 to T3 is going to be increased. But he's adding some T3 on top, so I'm guessing he's uh, either trying to stay in condition year-round or prepping for the show. He's using some aromacin, which is like the weakest um, anti-estrogen, and that's totally fine. He probably needs it. He developed a gyno recently, so he's probably prone to that kind of stuff. And then you can see usual stuff about training, food, and cardio. But if we go back to the gear part, he's only using 200 mg of test every other day, which is around 700 a week, and the same amount of Primo, which is very low. It's like 1.3 grams of gear in total. 
for a guy that is 300 pounds, one of the biggest bodybuilders in the world today. And this caused, again, a lot of a lot of comments, a lot of negativity, people saying that he's a liar and so on. And I wanted to give you guys my take, what I think about this. And honestly, I don't think he is lying. I believe he is taking this right now. However, I also do know that this is not what he took when he was actually growing, when he was getting to this point where he is right now for the past, I don't know, 5, 10 years. He has been 300 pounds for the last, like, 10 years. Maybe last, maybe like 7, 5 years, something like that. So he built his foundation with a lot more stuff. If you guys go and watch Fuad Abiyat's podcast with Luke Sando, James was there and he was very open about his use and actually he was one of the more extreme guys. He was very open, he was talking about his dosages and it was not a little, it was a lot. And that's only what he was willing to share on a YouTube channel, so he was probably even then hiding at least a half of it. It's usually like that, usually guys tell you half of the truth, maybe, maybe even less than that, but even at that point it was a lot. You know, so I believe that's how he built his foundation with a lot of stuff. You know, these pro bodybuilders, these Olympians, like in some cases, they don't have to use a lot. In some cases, the guys who have crazy genetics shape-wise, who have like really small joints, really 3D look. I believe some of them, like for example, Dexter Jackson, they don't have to use crazy amounts. But there are other guys who just have to grow as big as possible, like James Hollinson, in my opinion, and they have to use a little bit more. Now, you guys know that I compete myself in classic, but I do know a lot of uh, top amateurs in open. And they are not pros, but they have the size of the pros, basically. And I know what they're taking. And in some cases, they're taking a lot. And then when they try to maintain it, they can definitely go down and use a little. It's very easy to maintain. It's hard to progress. And the best of the best, the top pros, they usually turn pro very young. They can already see their potential. They grow without using a lot of stuff. But the top amateurs, they are amateurs for a reason. It's because they don't have the crazy shape. But they build the physiques up, by usually by using a lot of stuff. And I'm pretty sure all of them can maintain what they have with hard training, a lot of good food, and this amount of gear right here. So I believe that James is doing this right now. And I'm also thinking it's probably that like his coach, Stefan Kinsel, wrote him the protocol for right now. And he was so amazed that it was so little. And therefore he decided to share it with the world because it's probably the least he ever took. And uh, it's probably gonna go up as the show approaches, he's probably gonna use more and like more toxic compounds, but as of right now, I believe this is what he's taking, and that's why he decided to share it with us. You'll notice that later on, he's gonna stop posting this kind of stuff, he's not gonna tell us what he's using uh, five weeks out of a show. But right now, I don't believe he's lying, I believe this is what he's taking right now. It's not a lot, but for this point in his career and for this point in his prep, it's enough. It's probably enough. So guys, tell me what do you think down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And also, if you guys are looking for a coach, somebody who's going to be there for you, available all the time and who's very affordable as well, you can work with me. Just go to my Instagram account and DM me over there. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon. Stay tuned, guys. Subscribe. All the best and bye-bye.